Next question is from Catherine B. Fit. How do you go about training and nutrition with clients who have lost their period? Oh yeah, this is a this is a good one. So um, there's a few things. First off, you want to make sure there's no like big medical issues as to why this is happening. Um, but usually, this is what uh, what it ends up being. Usually, it's somebody whose stress levels are too high, or they're not handling them well. Uh, their sleep isn't good. They're not eating an adequate amount of calories and or essential fat, macronutrients yeah. like fats protein, sometimes carbohydrates, sometimes going on a strict keto diet for too long can cause this. They may also be overtraining and under fat. They may have too, they may be too lean. Essentially, you want to, you want to understand one thing is that your body, if it feels like it's an unsafe mm. state, unhealthy state, or uh, not a good context to be fertile, it'll prevent that from happening. And so it can be any of the things I talked about yeah. or all of the Lack things. Lack of nutrients, stress, all that stuff. All that stuff. So you, typically what I would do with a client uh, in this case, and usually I would work with a doctor, by the way. It wasn't like they'd come to me specifically to fix this, but this would be one of the things that they would list as, as one of their issues, or I would ask them about this. When I, what I would do is I would reverse diet them, so I'd slowly increase their calories. I'd have them focus on building strength. We would uh, make sure that their their proteins and fats and carbohydrates were balanced. I wouldn't have them cut anything too low. Um, we'd look at their sleep, and then we would observe. And usually after a period of a few months, uh, I'd say probably 70% of the time, if not maybe a little more, we would start to see things start to regulate. It's funny. I, I actually have a couple clients who's, who hired me, and I can think off the top of my head. Their goal was to improve their health and fitness, and uh, as a result of it, we got pregnant. They didn't realize that, that. I mean, that wasn't a goal that they hired me for, but they were like, oh my gosh, I, you know, my husband and I had been trying for a long time and my period was super, old, but uh, we just got pregnant. And it was all because my approach through fitness was improving their health. So that was a side effect of it. Yeah, this, mm. is, this is actually, or at least for me, this was actually pretty common. Um, I, I saw this a lot and maybe that maybe more so in my uh, early years. And I think that had a lot to do with the, it's, it's normally a combination, right? It's rarely ever uh, a client loses their period just because they're stressed at work, you know, like, or a client lo loses their period just because they're on a low calorie diet for a while. Like it's normally like the kind of the perfect storm. They're kind of doing all of those things. Uh, the most common for me uh, was actually women that were under eating fat and calories and also really stressed. Mm -hmm. So I would get these high performing ladies that were, you know, CEOs right. or entrepreneurs. So they're kind of grinders working really hard, answering calls all night long. Yeah. Right. High stress level, not sleeping really well. Also growing or coming up in the, the, the nineties and early two thousands of demonizing fat still. And so they ate, you know, ch chicken breasts and salads all day long and were only consuming 1200 calories. And then they also want me to train them three to five days a week. And then that, that, that created this perfect storm for the, the period to shut down. And simply by me pulling back on the intensity, making some effort towards, you know, reducing stress and sleep and increasing their healthy fats, almost always fixed it. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, there's always going to be exceptions to the rule. This is a very individualized, depends type of question. But in my experience, that was some of the most common offenders. It is your your fertility. This is both for men and for women. Is a very it's a it's a pretty remarkable single signal that can tell you something is off. I mean, you may be feeling like you're good, like you feel good, maybe because you're not listening to the signals of your body and you're just, you're wired all the time. So you think that that's a good thing. Right. And you may be like my, I have a buddy who, this is a guy whose sperm count was below fertile. Right. And he's just like, man, I felt good. And I'm asking like, what do you mean you felt good? He's like, well, I was working and I wasn't getting good sleep, but I was hyped. And I'm like, okay, you're in this hyped state of being all the time. Your body's not going to want to procreate. So same thing, got him to sleep, increases his, his calories, focus a little bit more on strength training, less on the other intense type workouts, and his sperm count, you know, climbed quite a bit. Same thing happens for women. This is one of those signals. And what 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 I don't what I don't like is that we tend to band-aid it. So what they'll do with women is they'll they'll maybe prescribe fertility drugs and other things, which sure it could it could make you you know drop an egg or produce more or whatever. Or for men, you know, give them testosterone, but you're really band you're putting a band-aid over a problem, and over time that problem might actually get worse, especially now that you're ignoring it uh, by putting a band-aid over.